thanks, Roland, for putting this on. It's amazing. Uh, thanks to Ned and Dan for making like, this entire thing possible, and thanks to all of you here. And what I want to talk about is compelling writing and how to write in a way that people are interested in, which is a lot different than writing to get like, likes or upvotes or, or what have you. So I want to talk about that a little bit. And also before I start, I just want to say like, how passionate I am about, about Steemit and about the entire kind of disruption that is Steemit. Uh, and, and as a writer, it really connects with me, and I'm so passionate about it that at the last sort of intensive, the last seminar I put on, I had Ned speak and we talked about Steemit. And of the maybe 80 people, 100 people that were there, uh, uh, two of them are here today in this, in this room. So I guess 100th of our community just came from that little event. So to you guys who are here, thank you guys. Um, so I'm super passionate about it and I just think this is just the beginning and I'm excited to see how this grows. And again, if you just search the article on Rolling Stone, uh, you can find it and some of your friends in there. So, so I wanted to share like, 15 best writing practices. And just for background, my whole life I've been a writer. When I was in second grade, my dream was, I found a little uh, essay I wrote, and I wrote, when I grow up, I want to be a writer, and I want to like own a million books. I just loved writing. That was always my passion. So for people who can't find their passion, two tips for it is, one is, find what you love doing when you were younger that a teacher or a parent didn't make you do, and that's normally your passion. And the second one is, what would you do if you didn't get paid for it, what would you still do? And for me, that's writing. So, so just to get a sense for, for, for people here, I assume all of you are posting on Steemit, maybe not everybody. How many people are sort of are writing on, on Steemit itself? Cool, so about 90% of you. The rest are just too shy to raise your hand. Okay, cool. Um, and how many people uh, maybe have written a book? Has anyone written a book? Anyone else? Cool. Good for you guys. Wow, a lot of you guys, a lot of, many of you. Good for you guys. Let me know what it is. And how many people like, would eventually one day like to write a book? Yeah, tell your story, why not? Yeah, and for those of you who don't, tell your story, why not? Writing a book is the greatest thing ever, even if no one reads it, because you get, to see, you get to see your story, and you get to see your ideas, and you get to grow through writing. I learn more from writing than actually publishing it. So what I want to talk about is, I want to talk about how to write in a way that really connects with people, how to write in a way that makes people want to read it, and how to write in a way that um, we can really express what's true. I think we're in danger in, the, in this sort of, like, one of the dangers of, I love Steam, but one of the dangers is to measure your value by how many upvotes you get versus how good it is. Anyone I know who's an artist and my side career besides writing is I write for Rolling, for, writing for Rolling Stone is I've interviewed all the greatest musicians that I look up to, all the actors I look up to, and the real artist, the work is done once they've finished it. Right, once you've finished whatever you're writing, even if it's, just, if it's a post, whatever it is, it's done once you finish it. Afterward, if it gets if it's successful, whether it's measured by upvotes or sales or whatever it may be, that's just a bonus. So I would say like the number one rule of doing what you're, of writing what you're, what you're writing is like, you're gonna see a theme here. From everyone I've talked to who are really kind of popular Steemians, is that what we're calling ourselves, it's Steemians? Is that it? Yes. Steemians, okay, cool. So, uh, so everybody who's been really successful didn't do it as a marketing thing, like, oh, there's a niche, and this niche is unexploited, and, and this many people are into this niche. They did it because it's something they love, and you'll find that, you know, Heidi, who was speaking earlier, and some of the people who are speaking later are just already exploring a passion of theirs. So I would say the number one thing is, if you're, as you're trying to kind of grow on this community or any other community, is choosing what you love and what you're passionate about, because that way, if it doesn't get upvoted, like, you're not, you're not wasting your time. I have a challenge, when we open up for the Q&A section, I have a question for you guys, which is, I've turned so many people on to Steam It, but if they're not rewarded instantly with a bunch of, you know, Steam dollars, then they're off. So my question is, how can new people on Steam It be uh, motivated to stay on Steam It? So maybe I'll ask that question to you guys after this talk instead of you guys asking me questions. All right, number one rule of writing is this. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. They don't care about your thoughts. They don't care about your ideas. They don't care about what you have to say, what you did yesterday, or anything. They do not give a shit. And from there, can you make them care? Everything I write, I assume that nobody cares, that they have no interest. And if I start from that perspective, and if I can draw you in through the writing, that's where the story begins. So just assume, start by assuming nobody cares, and how can you draw them into your story or your point? Number two, then. One way to draw them in is something called open loops. Does, who here knows what an open loop is? Cool, has anyone, anyone seen the new Doctor Strange movie? Has anyone seen that? Cool, a couple of you saw it, so is it good? 
Okay, by the way, that's an open loop. An open loop was, I asked you what an open loop was, and then rather than explaining it, I went on to another subject and talked about Doctor Strange or something. So an open loop is, if I can start with something that captures your attention, and 98% of you didn't know what an open loop is, you're probably curious about it by now because I've been talking for two minutes and still haven't explained it yet, right? An open loop is, is, is at the top, can I tell you something that, that you're interested in and you want to know the answer to, and wait till the end. How many times have we just stayed through a really shitty movie just so we want to know what happens at the end, right? You know, it can be the worst movie ever, but I want to know how that happened, right? So, an open, so one is to use the idea of open loops, and, and it's true in relationships. You meet somebody you have a lot of common with, and you start telling all these stories. Um, you want it to continue. So an open loop is a great way to create intrigue because we're, we're creatures who love storytelling, right? Early, early, and it's storytelling is part of our sort of our, our, our DNA. So, so creating open loops at the top of a post or, or, or in a book is, is really powerful. Third tip is this, and I kind of said earlier, is don't worry about whether it's going to sell, whether it's popular or not. You know, write about something you care about. And a lot of, I know a lot of my friends have written really, really successful books and even I wrote a book called The Game, which has probably sold like million, millions of copies. And really when I wrote it, I thought nobody would read it. I thought nobody would read it, but I thought this story is so crazy, I just have to tell this story. So these things that seem, you can spend all your time trying to engineer the perfect thing. And the truth is, we have no control. We just don't know what's going to work or what's not going to work. So, so, uh, so if, for example, a lot of marketers say to follow your audience, see what your audience wants. And the problem with following your audience, for those of you who even have audiences already on, on Steam, it can become a trap because all your audience knows is what you've done in the past. They don't know what, you do, what you're going to do in the future. So if you're following your audience, you're already trapped. You know, your audience should be following you as you move forward through life. And it gets harder. Um, and again, because I talked to so many musicians, you think, okay, is it true that as musicians or artists get older, they just don't get as good because they're not young and in touch anymore? It's not really true. What happens is they get trapped in their own success, they get trapped in what their audience wants of them, and they get trapped in having responsibilities. Uh, so sort of being in touch with you and going where you want to go and not being afraid to leave people behind is what's going to actually make you a leader. Uh, next thing is this. It's a quick, it's a quick, it's a quick uh, note is... Don't hold, don't hold anything back. Uh, when someone asked uh, Heidi earlier what, what, what had really worked for her, she was like, I think you said like show, sharing my feelings. Is that what you said? And I find that so many people when they're gonna write, they just wanna show like a glorified side of themselves that everyone can relate to. There's a quote from Carl Rogers, um, the, the psychologist, who says the personal is the universal. I know so many people who think they're gonna appeal to everyone by being generic and universal and you appeal to nobody. But if you talk from your heart and you say the most personal stuff, the stuff you're scared, by the way, the only book, reason my books I think are successful is because I say the shit that I'm too scared to tell my friends or tell people. Somehow I can write it. And when you write it, people, are, people read, oh yeah, I relate to that. No one said that before, but that's exactly what I'm, what I'm going through. So don't hold, don't, don't hold back. There's a difference between just vomiting emotionally all over the page. It still has to be follow the number one rule of being interesting, right? But, uh, but the stuff you're too scared to tell everyone, that's the stuff you should be writing about and, and sharing. And that thought you think maybe is gonna get you unliked. And it's a scary time right now in the, in the culture because shit, everything, we get instant feedback on everything, right? Everything we write, we get instant feedback. We know everybody's opinion, which, which if you don't have a, a rock solid sense of who you are and what you're doing, uh, can lead to just trying to conform and be liked. And I promise you, uh, I wrote a book called Everyone Loves You When You're Dead. And the reason, it was interviews with celebrities, because when you're dead, you're no longer competition. As long as you're here, right? Um, if, no one, if no one doesn't like what you're doing, then you're probably not doing anything interesting, right? If, if, if everything if it's getting only positive feedback, then you're probably not doing anything new or interesting, right? So let, let some negativity be a sign that shit, okay, good. I'm actually saying something new and something, something meaningful. Um, let's see, what's next? Uh, oh, your only goal in writing is to hold someone's attention. So when I'm writing, the purpose of the first sentence is just to lead to the second sentence and make someone want to read the second sentence. The purpose of the second sentence is just to get someone to re want to read the third sentence. The cardinal, the goal of writing is to, is to, is to be interesting and the cardinal sin of writing to me is to, is to, is to be boring. Uh, and especially in this day and age of this limited attention economy we're dealing with. This tip, I think, is probably the most important one, uh, which is 
Joseph Campbell talks about having a sacred space to write in. And I think it's so important to have a space where you can write where the outside world is closed off. So if I'm gonna give you like one tip from this whole talk that you can take home, and I don't know how many people already do this. Does anyone know the program Freedom? Anyone know Freedom or use it? Great, okay. Forget about everything I've said before and everything I'm gonna say after. So Freedom is the greatest program. It just says, how many minutes do you wanna be of freedom do you want? And you type in 180 minutes of freedom and literally you cannot, cannot get off on the internet for three hours. So it's the greatest program and it's the only reason I've written any books or anything because like, the internet is just a, it's a, it's a amazing way to stay productive while actually doing nothing. So down, download Freedom, it's like nine bucks or something like that. And I find it so important if you're gonna do, to have a space in your day where you're out of touch. So here's what I do every morning is, one is you can preset Freedom for times on your computer. So every morning for four hours, as soon as I wake up, like do not look at your phone in the morning, do not look at your email in the morning. We'll still be there in four hours, unless you have to for work. It is, is the best thing you can do for yourself and your mind because you start your day proactive doing your creative work rather than reactive and responding to everyone else's agenda. It's a, it's a compulsivity. Does anyone do that already? A few people, it helps, right? Um, however, these are hard habits to break. So I have a saying which is create systems to protect you from your, weaker, from your lower self in the sense that well, will, where willpower fails, you can create an ironclad system. So the two systems, one is freedom. Freedom will keep you from getting on your computer. It's set for me every morning. And the second one is, well, what do you do with this thing, right? Because freedom doesn't work on, uh, on, on, most, on most smartphones. And uh, there's something you can buy called a refrigerator safe, which is for people on diets. And basically, you can put your Oreos or Doritos in this thing and lock it up for like six hours. So I put my phone in the refrigerator safe, lock it for a few hours. I don't put it in the refrigerator, but you know. Um, uh, and, and, and I swear, man, it's amazing how much you can get done. And you may think, well, shit, to do research or to post on Steemit, I need to be online to do this. Like, you can cut and paste later. Or B is if you make a list of what you have to look up, what you have to research later, you can get it all done like that afterward. Because as you know, every time you go online to research something, you like click on 10 other things and check your favorite websites. Um, so, uh, Another nice tool, by the way, is called Focus Bar. And Focus Bar just shows at the, at the top of your uh, desktop what you should be focusing on. So it's just a little reminder of what you should be doing. So Focus Bar is good, Freedom is good. And if literally, if you find yourself not starting Freedom, uh, in Tago Content Barrier, and I'm sure there are free options to that, uh, you can actually set, when I was on a serious book deadline, I only allowed myself online for one hour each day. And I still got everything done, but the great thing about Intego Content Barrier, any kind of things that keep kids off the internet, is you give a friend the password, and so uh, there's no way you can break that, that system. A um, Couple other notes. Next one is, you never know when inspiration is gonna come, and I think whether you're writing or, or not, that it's so important to write down an idea when you have it. I find if you don't write an idea when you have it, it's gone, or you keep returning to it. So I'm a big fan of, 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 of uh, note-taking apps. Anyone who works for me or with me, the first thing they learn is, is, is how to take good notes. Literally, even when I'm sleeping, uh, I don't like to have my phone in the room, cause, cause, uh, but I'll have like a, a, a notepad there. If I'm surfing, I'm a surfer, if they made a waterproof pad, I would probably be taking that out. That, that out. But uh, literally, write down your ideas, because they're gonna go away if you don't, or they're gonna disappear. You think you'll remember it, and you won't, especially if you wake up from a dream. Um, also, Really important, John Lennon, someone once asked John Lennon for his tips on songwriting, and he said, one tip is, if you start a song, don't stop till you've finished it. Same goes for writing a post, same goes for writing, uh, not quite for writing a book, because you can't do it in one sitting, but same goes for writing anything, which is write through to the end. Write through to the end and don't be precious about it. The biggest problem, uh, does anyone suffer from, does anyone have writer's block? A little bit, cool, not too bad. But the biggest problem people have is they start trying to make it perfect as they're writing and just write through to the end. It doesn't matter if it sucks because no one's gonna read it. It's just your first draft. So just write it through the end because also how many people start things and don't finish them, right? So number one tip is write it through to the end. Um, and don't worry about shaping it. Don't worry about form because no one's gonna read it. Next thing, and I'm kind of racing through this because we only have a few minutes. Next thing is uh, two letters that will change your productivity and make you kind of get things done three times as quickly are the letters TK. It's an old newspaper language, but TK means, kind of stands for to come, even though it's TK. There's probably a real reason why that, which we can look up online, but uh, when freedom is off your computer. Uh, but um, it was, I think it was a copy editing term uh, 
So, and I think the reason why it was TK, I just realized why. TK is because those letters don't occur together in the English language, at least uh, very often the letters TK, there's no word that has TK, T next to K. So the, here's how TK works. When you're writing, and, it, and uh, if you don't know what's next, like you're sort of like a, a TK could be, there's a year of something you don't know, there's a fact you don't know, uh, you just can't find the right word, and I want to write maybe really quickly or write a lot. Uh, TK just fills in the word and you come back to it later. So if you're like, it was, uh, I was at Steamfest in uh, Amsterdam up with a population of uh, TK and it was a really TK vibe with all these TK people. And later I'll come in and fill, I'll fill in what it is, but you can race through things really quickly and then you can just you know, search for TK and fill those in later. But it allows you to keep your inspiration going. The reason I said a sacred space was important earlier is because if you're interrupted and people who study flow states, if you're interrupted, um, it takes 20 minutes to get back to the state, to the state of creativity, and, and to get back to what you're working. So every interruption, you lose 20 minutes. So that's why it's important to have that space that nobody can enter. Uh, and TK allows you to stay in the flow and not start looking up things online or, or sweating, uh, sweating over a word. Um, also, uh, you know, I was talking to a friend, uh, and he said his writing sucked. And I said, everyone's writing sucks on your first draft. And so a quick note for those who kind of want to write books is the way, here's the way I think of writing, and I do this with posts too, which is the first draft is just for you. When you're writing it through to the end, it's just for you. No one's ever going to see it. So if I'm, doing, if I'm writing a whole book, I'll just get the whole thing done, and it's, I mean, it sucks. I would never publish it. No one's ever going to read it, but it doesn't matter. But somewhere in this kind of whole mess of crap, there is the book to be carved out of that space. So the first draft is for you. Then once that's all done, the second draft is for the reader. And I think the art, the art of writing is actually in the revising. It's not in the writing itself, it's in the revision. So the second draft is for the reader, and I think, how can I cut away everything and just winnow it down to the most interesting parts? And then the third draft is for the hater. And, and by that I mean is, okay, I want to make sure my facts are ironclad. I want to make sure that if I'm saying something kind of controversial, I think about what are the other perspectives and what are the arguments against it and answer those arguments within the, within the post or within the article uh, or the book itself. Uh, you know, kind of like, like an Eminem song, he already has answered all his haters and every argument within the song itself. There's no criticism you can make of him that he hasn't already made. So, uh, so that's kind of like a, a sort of a, a way to guide yourself through, through, through doing it. And as I was saying earlier, the art, the art uh, the art being in the revising, um, one thing I do when I'm done, and if you really kind of care about what you're doing, is I'll read it out loud to somebody. By reading or writing out loud, you can really hear how it rings, how it sits with someone, where it's boring, where it slows down, where it doesn't work. So reading your stuff out loud is, 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 uh, is huge. Most important rule of writing, remove anything you can get away with removing. Like, I know I'm reading a bad book or a bad article or a bad post is if you can just cut out three paragraphs or three pages or three chapters, and it makes literally no difference. Uh, people get scared to remove stuff. And I talked to a friend who's a producer. He's written, he's produced probably at least, I mean, at least 50 number one albums. And he says when they're done with the, when they're done with the album, and maybe they have 25 tracks recorded, and they want to maybe have like a 15-track album, he says, great, reduce it to 10 tracks. Reduce it down to 10. Really make those tough decisions, and when you're down to 10, then see what you have to add back in. People are so scared to cut out things, but you don't realize you can put it back in as easy as you cut it out. So it's better to like err on the side of cutting out more than, uh, than cutting out less. And again, there's so much good stuff already written on Steemit on how to get, you know, draw attention to your post with the right photos and with the right headline, and that's the marketing stuff. I'm really passionate about the creative stuff, because here's the deal. Like, you know, Twitter just shut down Vine, right? So anyone who's building their platform solely on Vine or something, these the websites will disappear, but your writing won't if you keep it. And that's something that's always there and it's always there for you. So you have to be doing this writing for yourself. If you're doing it for any other reason, you're doing it for the wrong, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the last things that I would say is one is if you want to write a book, have a solid deadline. If people ask me what the secret is to writing, getting writing done, it's having a deadline hanging over your head with looming consequences. So a lot of the people here who have been successful, there was something at stake for them. They had to pay off their college loan, they had to fund their travels, they had to deal with their electricity bills. So having something at stake 
allows you to do the writing quicker. If you don't have something at stake, there's a website called Stick. I think it's S-T-I-C-K-K.com, where literally you can choose your, the, 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 ch the charity that you hate the most, like whatever, like the Donald Trump campaign fund or whatever, you, whatever charity you hate the fucking most, but clearly that's too late. Uh, and, uh, and if you fail, your, your, uh, your money will go toward a cause that you're totally against. <laughs> um, so, uh, so having a deadline with consequences is great, and I wanna kinda make, I wanna make the argument that it only takes two months to write a book. That you could, if you do 10 pages a day, and then you can write 10 pages a day, and I think that's a reasonable deadline, and that's, 300 pages you could do in, what's that math? That's a month, right. Okay, cool, 30 days. Uh, so clearly I'm an English major, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you, that's 30 days, right? You spend the next 30 days proofreading. I think if you write 10 pages a day, it takes you 20 pages. You'll proofread the next day, the third. Uh, so my, the rate generally is if you can do 10 pages a day, 20 pages to proofread on the second read, 30 pages to proofread on the third read. So literally in two months, you could actually have a book written if you're willing to dedicate the time uh, to doing it. And I guess the last and, and, and uh, the, la the last and most important thing is people talk a lot about your passion. We talk a lot about, and I, you're gonna see it's a theme of this whole conference about doing the stuff you really, really care about. There's a Joseph Campbell quote, and I love it. Uh, and it's, it's quote is, the insecure way is the secure way. Has anyone heard that before? The insecure way is the secure way. Which is, a lot of us or myself grew up and the people were saying, hey, you wanna be safe, you know, get a job, make a money, you know, you know your money's coming in. That's supposedly the secure way. But the truth is, if you lose that job or you lose that income, then you have nothing, nothing to show for yourself. If you've spent it or it's gone or you lose the job, there's nothing there. But the insecure way, doing what you love, doing what you care, doing what you're passionate about, the truth is if you do what you care about, and, and I was having this conversation with people earlier, it might take three, four, five, ten times as long for the money to actually start coming in. But if the money never comes in, if it stops happening, you've already built something that you care about and that matters to you. So doing the thing that feel that the society and the culture says insecure is actually the most secure thing you can do. So thanks guys for listening.